Hi, I'm John Moolis, and welcome to another one of my videos about my time at the Department of Finance in Canberra and the bullying and harassment and torment that I suffered during that period. Now, I've come up to when I was suspended from the Department of Finance in October 1985. Um, they explained it to me um, that, that I was still technically an employee of the Department of Finance, an officer of the Department of Finance, that the, the complaints were still to be investigated they, 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 and that they would be investigated while I was at home, while I was away from the Department of Finance. And um, and then they would take action and, and we would see what happened. And at that stage, you know, I thought, you know, well, this is it. I'm going to be left with this loan to pay off, of which at that stage was about um, $6,000 that I couldn't pay off. And, you know, I needed a, a regular salary coming in to, to keep paying that loan. But... Um, to give them credit, I mean, the Department of Finance handled all of this officiously and by the book, the suspension. Um, you know, they told me what my options were. Um, they said exactly what suspension was. And they told me that, uh, that if, I, if I didn't, that, uh, they told me that if I was experiencing hardship that I could get my salary put back on, apply to have my salary put back on again, and that, that, that I could use the resources of the department, you know, and they told me that I could uh, appeal against whatever decision came out uh, about um, the complaints, uh, you, know, um, you know, if the recommendation was that I be dismissed or, or anything, that I could appeal against it, um, well... At that stage, they didn't say that they intended to dismiss me. You know, at that stage, I was looking at charges under the Public Service Act that possibly a fine of $40 or something or, or being knocked back an increment or two increments in pay as punishment. You know, that, those options. At that stage, you know, I didn't think that I would be dismissed because, like I said I, uh, before, I had done nothing to warrant dismissal under the Public Service Act because under the Public Service Act, um, dismissal was mentioned under the Public Service Act. But I had done nothing to warrant being dismissed. And that was the frustration that Galloway and Walsh and the bosses at Department of Finance had, that they had nothing on me, that they couldn't dismiss me because I hadn't done anything serious enough to warrant dismissal. So they had to resort to white anting, you know, chipping away at me psychologically with complaints all the time and, and trying to make the situation so unbearable for me in finance that I would have to resign. And But, but I didn't realise um, Galloway's plan B. You know, Galloway had said in his interview process, that he had a plan to get rid of me. And he put forward that plan to the interviewers and he was selected in the job because of that plan. Now, I had picked it up early on that, that the strategy was to try and force me to resign by fabricating complaints and manufacturing complaints. And that wasn't working. I, I had picked that up and I was determined to dig in and stay because I had to stay because of the loan, paying back the loan. So um, Galloway pulled out plan B in case plan A didn't work. And I didn't realise it at the time that, that that was the second part of his strategy, that if plan A failed, he would find an area that I was interested in. I mean, I was interested in journalism, in television and, and film and all that sort of thing. So he sussed out, you know, well, which government agency deals with that? I know, the Depart the National Film and Sound Archive. So he would dangle this in front of me, moving over to there to an, an area that I liked, um, that, I, that they'd get me out of the department, and while I was out of the department, 
he would pull out one of the old complaints and, and you know, deal with a, a, a complaint ag out against me if there was one, and of course there was one, and that, that he would abolish my position and then he would um, use those two complaints against me as grounds for dismissal and all of the other complaints, the cumulative effect of all the other complaints and everything against me as grounds for dismissal. You know, I didn't realise it at the time, but that, that was his strategy and, and that, that was what he told the interviewers he was going to do because the, the imperative, the number one priority was to get me out of the department to right the wrong of me being confirmed in my job. You know, and, and you know, and, and so anyway, you know, I, I, and I was told, and finance told me that I could apply to get my my salary put back on if I was experienced, if I would experience financial hardship. And I told them that I had the loan that I was paying out, um, that um, my father was unemployed, that I had to live at home. My father was unemployed and all of that, and, and, and that I had outstanding bills at the Reader's Digest. I had ordered several books and videos and CDs from the Reader's Digest, and I had to pay off those. And they said, well, you know, you have to provide proof of all of that. So, you know, um, I had to smuggle my father's dull form out of the house and photocopy it. I mean, like I said... Department of Finance allowed me to use the facilities of the department um, during that period. Um, I photocopied all of that. I gave it to um, Galloway and he put my salary back on. I, I gave it to Walsh and, and they put my salary back on. So effectively, this was the situation I had wanted all along. You know, I was at home doing whatever I wanted and and going wherever I wanted, um, not working, and, and I was being paid a full salary. The full salary I was getting in the public service, I was being paid. And I couldn't believe just the, the bright, how bright things looked at, at just being away from the department, being away from that pressure cooker situation of complaints and everything like that, and like I said, when, when I was at the Department of Finance during that terrible period, I would wake up in the morning and just stare at the ceiling, not wanting to get out of bed. You know, thinking, I have to go back to that terrible place again. You know, and, and while I was there, I had developed a, a real siege mentality there. You know, everybody who came to the counter, the only thing I thought of was, are they going to put in a complaint against me? Am I going to be called back before the bosses and everything? And you, you can't imagine just the psychological impact of this, the, how, how terrible it was just working under those conditions. It was, it was like being in a concentration camp. And there, I was under suspension, I was at home. You know, I, I could, you know... I woke up in the morning, the, the sun was out and, and I could go wherever I want and do whatever I want and I was being paid a full salary in that. And and during that period I got back into the gym and, and was working out again and I was going to the pool in the morning, swimming and all of that and I was making, you know, it was the road back essentially, you know, because I had been completely broken psychologically by being in the Department of Finance and having to, to put up with all of that. And, but, but of course, um, the, but I, I had to wait for the, um, the result of the charges from the Department of Finance. And I thought, well, you know, I thought maybe, well, I, I just thought that It'll be, it would be run-of-the-mill, whatever. Um, what happened one day, the courier came to um, the door, you know, and delivered me this envelope from Galloway, and it was the result of the charges, 
and the recommendation was that I drop a couple of increments. I have a, a fifty dollar fine. He said, but it said, however, in lieu of Mr. Moulis's conduct over the past eight years in the Department of Finance, which has been completely unacceptable, which is charged under the Public Service Act several times, I recommend that these these provisions be overturned and that instead Mr. Moulis be dismissed. And that was the end of the letter. You know, signed J.V. Galloway, Department of Finance. And I, I remember just staring at this letter. And, and, and when I think about it, I mean, a, a few months later, there was a case in, in Brisbane, I think, of a, of a bureaucrat, senior bureaucrat, being suspended from the department where he worked. And he received a letter, the same sort of letter at home, saying that he was going to be dismissed and he committed suicide that afternoon. He just hanged himself that afternoon and, and the recommendation was that, that um, letters like that not be sent out to people, that instead that the person be called into the department and receive counselling uh, to help soften the blow of it. You know, but of course Galloway and Walsh, you know, they didn't think like that. And of course, and it shows you just how resilient I was, that how hardened I was to this, this campaign, that, that my first thought wasn't to commit suicide. You know, and, and um, they included in, in with that, that envelope, there was another envelope that um, came the following day from the courier saying that I could appeal against that. You know, that, you know, and like I said, the Department of Finance followed the, the proper procedure. You know, they gave me all the information about appealing against the decision. And, and so I decided to appeal. I mean, my first instinct was to appeal because, you know, I still had the loan out that had to be repaid. I mean, I was locked into the job and everything. And so my, my instinct was to appeal. And um, as it turned out, uh, uh, to an outside body, the Merit Protection Review Agency, which was previously known as the Promotions Appeal Committee. And the Promotions Appeal... And, and I thought that, you know, well, it was basically a tactic to buy some time because I knew that the appeal wouldn't be heard for months, possibly more than a year, because of the backlog of work in a new government agency being set up that they'd have a backlog of work and that that I could buy some time I could you know spend more months you know being paid to do nothing and so um, so I decided to appeal against it but by that stage I had I knew that the end was near that that I had reached the end of the line and that um, I couldn't go back into the Department of Finance. I, I, I knew that possibly my time in finance was over. I mean, it was eight years. I was still a base grader. There was no prospect of promotion. It was the ultimate dead-end job. And I, I knew that I had to find something else, whatever. I just had to get out of there. And, and I had thought about resigning because I knew that if I resigned the resignation would be immediately accepted, that Galloway would accept it with glee. But, um, and anyway, my, uh, there was something else that my mother said to me um, during that time. You know, she said, well, you know, you can resign and get your superannuation and pay off your loan with the superannuation. And back then, when you left the public service, no matter what age you were, you got a lump sum payment or you could get your superannuation as a pension. And I had never thought of that. I mean, to me, superannuation was this extra tax that came out of your pay that you never saw that money again and that, uh, and that you know, I would be locked into the job, you know, and, and, and have to go back into the job. And it just changed the whole situation completely. Because he was an escape hatch. 
here was a solution to the problem. That I could resign, or else be dismissed, and I'd get my superannuation payout, and the loan would be gone. The, the loan would be expunged. And that I could really start a new phase in my life. I could have a fresh start in another career or, or doing something else and, and, and move on. And it just changed everything completely. It changed the whole dynamic. And at the same time, um, my father said to me that he knew, he knew the boss at the National Library. And the boss of the National Library w would give me a job. You know, and I, and I said to my father, I said, look, I don't want it. I don't want another job. I don't want another job in another government agency where I'd go into there, the same problems had happened, I'd be locked in there for eight hours a day, suffocating, claustrophobic, psychological problems, all of that sort of thing, just deteriorating mentally and psychologically, doing doing work which I hated, you know, because I knew that if I went into that job, the same problems had come up, the same complaints had come up, and that my father would know about it all, because, you know, the boss of the National Library would be telling my father about all of this, you know, and, and that would further erode rela the relationship with my father, which was already bad enough. And the last thing I wanted was, was, was that situation. Like, you know, I mean, the last thing I wanted was to go into any new job full stop. I mean, I needed months to recover from the Department of Finance. I mean, all those years of torture, of psychological torture, of bullying and harassment and everything. You know, you can't just walk, walk into another job as if nothing had happened over the past eight years. You know, post-traumatic stress disorder and all of that. You know, I, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't go into another government job like that. You know, I, I just wanted nothing to do with the public service, with politicians, with bureaucrats, anything like that. You know, I just wanted a rest from it. I just wanted to be away from it. I mean, I wanted to go up to Byron Bay. I wanted to move out of Canberra. I, I just wanted to completely wipe the whole eight years of my life just out, you know, and, and, and to just have a fresh start. And there, when I was suspended from finance, that was part of that fresh start. It was a, uh, it was a real fill-up to me, real inv invigorating. I mean, I, I restarted driving lessons with my mother. You know, my mother took me out for driving lessons and... I, I was driving in her car when I, mean, I restarted at the gym. I was going down to um, Canberra Pool Reserve here and, and I was meeting up with people who I knew um, again. And, and, you know, that whole period under suspension, it was like a new life had started for me and there was no way that I could go back into the public service again and, uh, you know, and, and have to put up with all of that again. And, you know, and, and there was an, another thing too with the appeal. You know, the old promotions appeal committee, I thought that, that I wouldn't win the appeal um, because the PAC had turned down nearly every appeal against promotions that they heard. They upheld very few. But I was told that apparently with dismissals, Every, nearly every appeal was successful. That they were public servants and in an outside agency. They didn't like the idea of, of a, a public servant being dismissed because of the terrible shame in Canberra that that would entail, being dismissed from the public service. So, you know, they upheld nearly every appeal that, that came before them. So I was looking at... at um, at going back into the Department of Finance again, back there with Galloway and Walsh and all of those people who hated me, and I hated them. I mean, and, and if that appeal had gone ahead, I was looking at nothing changing. Anyway, this is about to run out again, 
So goodbye and stay tuned.